come on along and help me sing this song where the adventure grew that's me and you and the whole world too We start our hike at the finished portion of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail. Across the street, in seemingly impenetrable brush and trees, are the remains of old iron tracks. Here, a proposed route of the Bay Circuit Trail will fill in a small gap. We are in Westford, a town that has protected a lot of open space. Let's take a side trip to meet Bill and Marion Harmon. Our trails were disappearing pretty quickly. This rural town was becoming built up, and our trails would disappear when a subdivision went in. So we thought, you know, we ought to get active in trying to save some open space, save some trails. Marion, along with her husband Bill, got active and started the Westford Conservation Trust. But Marion's love for wildflowers and birds went a step further. I was lucky enough to be able to get a column with the Westford Eagle, which is just our local paper. And um, so I can write a column, and then I ask in the column, would you send your wildlife sightings to me? With over 100 readers reporting sightings from birds to bears, and with help from friends, the Harmons have been able to compile the data. The red foxes are actually declining a little bit as the gray foxes increase. As a naturalist and outdoor educator, Marion takes children who have never been in the wilds and opens their eyes to the wonders that are all around us. Look at the spider web, isn't this cool? And look at me like, you think spiders are cool? <laughs> you know? I say, yeah, because look at this, you know? And then pretty soon they're pointing out every spider web and spider they see. Bill Harmon takes us to one of his favorite places, the Stone Arch Bridge. Marveling over the fact that there's no mortar holding these massive blocks in place, Bill ponders what he's been reading in the larger Boston newspapers. You'll notice there's a big section on sports, there's a big section on business and money, and there's a big section on automobiles. In fact, another section on automobiles goes on like that. There's no section on the subject of our planet. It's obvious that Bill Harmon cares very deeply for the Earth. And by developing trail guides and conserving open space, he is blazing new trails. We've been uh, developing trails way before we started with the uh, Bay Circuit Trail. And uh, we, just, we just have a lot. And somebody added them all up recently, and it's 50 miles of trails. A great blue heron in the distant marsh is carefully watched over. And Bill has given me fuel for thought. For now, it's to simply hike and see what I can see to look for environmental stewards along the path. We are in Acton at Neshoba Brook. The sky is reflected in a still pool where dragonflies seem to be fishing for food. Along the man-made stone banks, the water rushes onward. These rock walls, I am told, once kept cows on the path. And a yellow arrow tells me that I'm on the Bay Circuit Trail. There are purple flowers in the wetlands as we pass muddy tracks and hear the crunching of acorns under our feet. And we hear a sound that isn't so inviting, a female mosquito searching for blood. Suddenly we find ourselves venturing backwards in time. Trail through time, um, it's both a real trail, physical trail, and also sort of a concept. It's a heritage trail. It will allow the walker to visit sites that are from two different cultures. The basement at Wheeler Farm represents colonial history, while on the other side of Neshoba Brook, we go much deeper into the past. The archaeologists and I did a survey of the ones that are here, and we plotted them on a grid to see if there were any alignments or whether it was in fact just an array. 
Linda brings us to a place in time when Native American families may have come here, possibly to a sacred spot, where they may have created these stone piles as a way to remember family histories. Imagining how it might have been, there is also a message about how we moderns see our land. I wanted to get people out in nature any way possible because I know that once you get somebody out into the woods and they can see the, the streams and the rivers and the birds and you know all of the things of nature, it will raise their consciousness about nature. Continuing on the Bay Circuit Trail, we cross a brook to a kiosk. This is the site of a former pencil factory where David Monroe and John Thoreau competed in business. John Thoreau eventually won out and initiated his son into the trade, Henry David Thoreau. Bright red berries hang from branches and some amazing mushrooms sprout up from the moist soil. The rare song of a hermit thrush is intermixed with the persistent buzz of mosquitoes. The shallow roots of this tree were not enough to withstand the rocky terrain. And I passed some homes in this meadow. A bug hiding in the shade, a butterfly, and a double-winged dragonfly. Although we are in Concord now, Let's take another side trip to Acton to see how town government and the schools are working together. We wanted to learn as much about the Native American culture as possible. But number two, we wanted to share this with the community. Acton's very first sewer project uncovered the remains of an ancient civilization going back more than 6,000 years. Archaeologists came in and named the site Pine Hawk. Doug Halley, Acton's public health director, now oversees archaeology for the town and recognizes this opportunity. Here he goes through replicas of what was uncovered in the digs. This is uh, one of the replicas made by the Native American that worked with us, and it is a replica of a, a knife device that the Native Americans would use. Helping the trail through time, Doug lends his enthusiasm in searching to understand our past as something much more than merely history. They found a rock, a nice flat rock, um, that at the uh, very foot of that rock, they found a fire pit. And you could imagine that a Native American would be sitting on that rock with a nice fire in front of them. And uh, part of that is giving a three-dimensional life to uh, what you're looking at, rather than looking at that history as a two-dimensional item. Entering the town offices, you are greeted by an amazing display of what actually was found, feet beneath centuries of composting woodland duff. But for now, it's back to the streets and unwelcoming signs. And I didn't know how to interpret this sign. A hawk landing in the branches just 20 feet above me raising its talon into a fist. In Concord, historic houses and cornfields add views to the line of march Acton Minutemen tread on the 19th of April, 1775. We reach Minuteman National Park and cross the Minuteman Bridge. You can feel the history as music from the era is in concert at the Old Manse. Old inns, monuments, and buildings reminisce, bringing us past the main street of Concord. We amble with Emerson and Thoreau, the singing of songbirds, the unraveling of cat and nine tails, unusual blazes, and in the town forest, a pond. Well, I can tell you that I'm tired, dehydrated. 10 miles or whatever it was. It's a long walk, especially in this heat. Five miles maybe would be a good walk to um, enjoy what you're doing and, and seeing. But when you walk more miles, it it's becomes a physical endurance thing. And by the time you get to the end of your hike, you're not seeing anything anymore because 
You're so tired. After a short rest, we're on to finish day nine of the Bay Circuit Trail hike. We are almost to busy route two. This is Brister's Hill, and a plaque reads, I wish to speak a word for nature, Thoreau. A dragonfly, ready to enjoy the freedom of our next destination, Walden Pond. The time is coming in the dream song. All life is sacred and the world is reborn. The past is forgotten, the future unknown. There is only present, a time to come home. world of wonder feel the great spirit the messenger of